Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review. Okay, for Ready to Love, season four, episode three. Okay, episode three. But y'all know first things first, if you have not done so already, make sure to subscribe to my channel to become a whole Jay Bird, Jay Bird, dun, 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 and all that goodness and stuff. Okay, y'all know what to do. Go ahead and like and comment and share and relax and center and inhale and all the things on this screen. Okay, do it all. Do it all. Do it all. Okay, I want you to also make sure to follow me on social media. Boom. I am Jay Lee's Corner on all platforms now. Thank God. Okay, on IG, I was finally able to get my Jay Lee's Corner um, username. So, yeah, no more J underscore B. No more, no more. It's all just... Jilly's Corner. Okay, yay! Branding, okay? But y'all know to like the video and to subscribe or whatever. Okay, we will be having a special interview with Kimmy from Love and Marriage Huntsville this Sunday, okay, at 4 p.m. Central, okay, 5 p.m. Eastern, okay? Please make sure to come have a good time with us, the Ooh Ladies First panel. It will be on my channel, okay? So, again, come have a good time. Got some questions. If you do have questions for Kimmy, comment on our DM. On our DM. Comment on our IG. Send us a DM so we can ask your question on TV. If it's nice, don't be mean now, okay? Be respectful. Uh, now, the, the, the panel this Thursday... Okay, this Thursday panel is on my channel as well. So again, come on to on Sunday for the Kimmy interview, and then come on Thursday for the panel of the shenanigans around here. Okay, but let's get into the ready to love scenario. Okay, so look, new season, new crop of people, new relationships and feelings and all that stuff. So let's get into. So we do see there's a whole new mixer going on, okay? I forgot to pop that off. It's a whole new, and I may be popping off screen because y'all know for some reason nowadays, stream yard, it be real janky sometimes. We can't never tell. So when I notice my signal is getting low, it's getting low, I'm going to pop off screen, okay? Pop in, pop out. But again, um, <laughs> we know there was a little mixer going on with all the people. So we know Tommy has to let them know, hey, okay, the power this week is on the women, okay? The women will decide at the end of the week which one man, which one man will go home, okay? So make a good impression, date around, get friendly, okay? And then let us know who you do not want here no more, okay? Now, we see a few things happen at the mixer. I just added everybody up top as I talk about them because I didn't have time to put in different screenshots. It was team too much, okay? Boom, there's all the people right here. So, we see, you know, I think it's Cecilia or Tashia, whatever her name. I can't pronounce it right. But she came first. Now, she was in the bottom two in the first episode, all the guests at home on day one. So, she came to the mix a little bit early to ask the men, why did y'all put me in the bottom two? What happened? What y'all do? Now, I believe uh, Phil was there. I know Corey was there. And two other guys were there, too. Now, Phil was like, I didn't even talk to you, so I don't know, you know, what happened with that. And then Corey brought up how when I tried to talk to you, I got my head chewed off because, again, um, I asked everybody else on a date. So, again, it wasn't me because I didn't, you know, get a chance to do anything with you. Now, I was, she didn't really get an answer, but I feel like her asking them, hey, hey, why y'all going to think I'm like, let, let it go. Let it go. I mean, keep make ask the guys you talk to. Why ask the ones who you did not talk to? But I'm gonna leave that be as well. Okay. Now we do see Tyrone, okay, right here, who say, you know, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm nervous because again, one man gonna go home. I am a techie kind of guy. And saying because of that, you know what I'm saying? I'm usually very socially awkward. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Now he said that then, but later on we found other things. So I'm like, whatever. But again, he says it's hard for him sometimes to be in these social situations, social situations because he feels awkward. Okay, so it's socially awkward. Fine, fine, fine. Now we do see Carrie talking to Carrington. 
okay? And they were chit-chatting or whatever. Now she's like, no, he's really pretty on the ass. He looks really nice. But I really hope there's more to him than what meets the eye. Meaning he may be cute and swap and double nail, okay? The looks look amazing. However, talking to him is like an interview. Okay, and as a turn up, I just feel like you know it ain't it don't feel authentic. Okay, it feel like you know there's a wall in between us. I said, well, it may be. Okay, it may be. Now we do see Sabrina and Corey were having a conversation. I was like, please, for what? Okay, and I used the picture of them sitting there talking right here, and I was like, Corey, it's just you know. <sighs> Corey was talking, and I feel like Sabrina felt like he full of shit, okay? Because Corey has a habit of just trying to get the women to go on a date with him. Let me ask them, do you like me? Okay, you want to go on a date? But it's not really him feeling the moment out and enjoying that moment. He's trying to get to the next thing so fast because he he, he reminds me of a one hit a quitter. Or somebody who's a quick pumper. He may be a quick pumper. Because sometimes quick pumpers do that or whatever. But I'm like, let's let that be, okay? But for her, she's like, you know, can't you just feel the moment? You know, why do we have to all try to figure out what's next right now? Like, that's because I think she felt like he's rushing this moment to get another moment with whoever else. I'm like, he do, okay? He do. And she like, you know what? I'm good on him. He got on me. This ain't gonna work. And I'm like, Sabrina, I agree. Okay. At this point in time, Corey, you can tell he's single because he does not know how to talk to women. And he has a game that he runs and he plays. And once he's out of play, he's like, okay, what I'm gonna do? Let me move on to the next one. And I'm like, Corey, stop doing that. Okay. But we do see Corey ends up getting a date with somebody, honey. Corey went on a date with uh Moomin. I think it's Moomin. That's how her name is pronounced with Moomin. Um, she had a flat tire the night of the mixer, leaving the mixer. She was parked out front, a whole flat tire, and Corey changed her tire that day. I'm like, oh, that was, that was nice. That was very, very nice, okay? But my question was, was all the other men gone? Like, did nobody else know she had a flat tire? Like, I, I just wonder, was he the only person who realized she had a flat tire? Did nobody else want to help her? I don't know. But anyway, she brings up how, you know, him doing that changed her mind about him and so she went on a date with him she said he's not a bad guy you know what i'm saying when he's being nice he's actually really cool and i do think you know what i'm saying could, could corey be a person who puts his worst foot forward okay and is better in a one-on-one -on -one setting that's possible the issue i have of course because he keeps wanting to do this like um let me see who I can date next. Let me see who I can be with next. And I'm like, no, bro, live in the moment. And the way he talked about kind of copying and pasting and copying and pasting conversations, you know, just trying to get on date one. I'm like, you, it's like you, it's not a race. You're not really filling out the women or trying to get to know them. You're trying to get to another point, you're trying to get from, from point A to point B, but you don't get no fuck to get there. That's the problem. Okay. Now, on the little date or whatever, as we see, they were on like little uh, in the in the forest, but they were in the park walking and hiking and had like a little picnic. But he had her climb up a little, little bit of a hill up on a little tree, and she they would sit up on a little tree like it was a um a horse. And I was like, what is going on here? What is he doing? I just think it's weird when men don't get. Maybe I should not have anybody trek through the forest. To have you know a little picnic on a tree stump because that may not be good. We don't want to be getting hot in the in the weather with our hair messing up, okay? And sitting on tree trunks. It was weird to me, but I guess she liked it. Now, cause this is them, okay? This is them, and I'm like, where the bugs? At? I don't want to eat raw no bugs, but that's just me. I'm gonna leave that be. But again, she had a good time, so I guess that's what it is. Now, when he sat behind her, and I'm like, where did you get your penis away from my butt? Your penis should not be anywhere near her butt. But she said for her, he's corny, but she makes him laugh, girl. But he makes her laugh, and she liked that. So, Moomin, for some reason, likes uh, Corey. I mean, as we always say, there's always somebody for everybody. Or no, that's, we don't care. Anyway, we see Camille, who sets up a double date, okay? Now, Camille, who's in the yellow, likes Courtney used to the bald head gentleman in like the green shirt. And then we also have Walter, who was in the, the pink 
the pink. I think it's pink shirt. And then um, Courtney with the big lion is here. And she keeps bringing up like he's a Leo. And you know, Leo the lion. Okay, fine, fine, fine. But Camille say the reason she did a little double, double date is because she wants to see how Cornelius acts and interacts with other women. How does he touch? Like, is it touch? Like, is he, is he a touchy person? Like, I want to see what he do. I'm like, you going to invite him on a date to spy on him? I mean, is that, is that sane? I mean, because you just met him the other day, okay? And so your solution to be with him is like, let me see how he going to act with me when he's out with someone else. I was like, girl, I guess if you want it, I love it, just leave me. So they sit around and we're chitting, chatting or whatever, and they're talking. They discuss you know, love and sex and religion. They all believe in God, you know what I'm saying? They all pray, you know, for this, that, or the other. Um, So that was what it was. And the subject of sex kind of comes up, okay? And Courtney say for her, she prefers sex before marriage because she wants to be sure the sex is good. Okay, that is good. Because she don't want no bad sex. Well, no, you know what? No one wants bad sex. Not me, not Courtney, not you guys. No one wants bad sex. You want good sex. You want sex so good, you want it whenever, okay? And I can appreciate her saying she does not want to have to marry somebody and then the sex is horrible because then it won't work. And I do believe if you're in a marriage for somebody who is, is, is bad sexually, it won't be fun. Okay, let's be honest. Now, Camille say for her, she would rather wait, okay? Because she wants, she says, she, I know for a fact it would be a, a period of time where um we would not be having sex at all. Okay, a period. I'm like, wait, what? And when she said that, Walt was like, oh, no, no, no. If I want sex, I, if I want sex, I want sex, okay? And I'm like, hmm. But to me, Walter probably run red lights. I think Camille was saying, like, you know, when I'm on my period, we can't have sex. And he's like, no. I'm like, oh, Walter run red lights? Meaning you have sex while you're on your period. But again, it was weird. Okay, it was a weird conversation. Now, Cornelius said that he has no issue in waiting. You know what I'm saying? Because even with Camille saying for her, she wouldn't even mind, you know, them going by counseling them or whatever before engaging in sexual things in marriage or whatever. But I was like, girl, okay. Now, <laughs> when Courtney said, like, look, I need to be able to touch him. I need to be able to rub on my mans and do things because my love language is touch. Okay. So it reminds me of too, like, my love language, my love language is for sure touch and conversation. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, when she said that she likes to be able to touch people, and she started rubbing his leg. He said, "Oh no, that's fine. Like meaning, if you want to rub on me, that's cool, cool." But Camille then said, "No, she she can't rub on you." And I was like, "What's going on here?" She, no, she can't rub on you. And I'm the fact that Camille like made a point and said, "Like no, 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 she can't do that." And Walter was like. Well, what the fuck am I here for? It might give because it came off like, okay, I'm telling you, I don't want you touching him because I want to touch him. So again, what's like I'm gonna sit here, eat my food and shut up because again, I ain't like I'm just here for the for the food or whatever. And I'm like, see, that's why I don't know why Camille did not just she it was kind of a play to Walter because you had him there when you know for a fact you don't even really like that man or whatever. I'm gonna leave that be too. So we do see Tyrone and Zadia. I think I'm saying her name right. Zadia go on a date together. And he seems very nervous, but he brings up, and I'm glad that he kind of cleared the air. He said, well, for one, because earlier he said that he is, you know, um, a techie. And so techies are usually, you know, the so awkward. But he also brings up here, we're talking, talking to Zadia, that he also has been diagnosed with PTSD because he was deployed twice. He said he's also been hospitalized for his PTSD. And he also said he, he knew he had started doing things to control his to control his anxiety. Um, so he like runs a heel every day or whatever. And so she brings up like for her, she gets it because she because she worked, I think she's a, she's a personal trainer or she's in fitness. And so she brings up how you know she does she also does, you know, breathing exercises and stuff like that to calm people down and help people not be so out of control of how they feel, you know, and whatnot or whatever. And so 
what I like is him saying like he felt like, you know what I'm saying, he had to share with her so that she could understand him. Because sometimes we don't get why focus how they are, and that's why he is how he is. And it kind of makes sense. But I do feel like if that man is still struggling with PTSD, is he ready to be on this show? You know what I'm saying? Not that anyone with PTSD does not deserve to be dating someone, but I feel like this is such a quick show. And is you know, it's it's a quick show. Like it's like they be dating like a month or whatever. So I'm like, maybe he should be dating somebody in the outside world. He can spend more time with them or whatever. And it is like a competition. Because you don't want a PTSD to affect the situation, okay? But, you know, she appreciate, appreciated him being vulnerable and being open or whatever, and, you know, letting her know what's going on with him. So it was, a, it was a cute moment, and at first, he was a bit nervous, but I do feel like towards the end of it, he was okay, and it was a cool connection or whatever. Um, He, like, I just have to re remember to myself that this is just date one. Like, don't, you know, go from zero to 100 too quick. Because I can still get to know other people too. So again, their date was you know it was cute, cute little date. Okay, now let's get on to Carrington and Alicia. No, I'm sorry, Aisha. Um, Carrington for sure has a facade, and I feel like I can see right through it. And hearing him have conversations in this episode, um. But I felt like he did the same thing the last episode. Um, but I'm going to leave that be. So she was asking him how if her being 38 and him being 33 would be an issue for him. He said, well, no, absolutely not. He said, I'm used to dating old, older women. So you're actually younger than some of the older women I used to date. Which means he like cougars. Okay, who probably pays bills. You know what I'm saying? Take him on trips or whatever. So that was his thing. You know what I'm saying? He, I want a cougar. I like cougars. Cougars like me, and you know, we're gonna leave that be. But I still feel something like I don't trust him. Um, so she also asked him, Okay, what do you do? Um, and when she found out that he worked, when he found out that he worked in the nightlife, she was like, Oh, okay, because she knows that it's a lot of women, so you know, what I'm saying it may be something different for her to have to deal with him being around so many of the women, which he could be fucking. So, you know, she asked him, she said, she, she said, I don't want to be able to, or that, and I don't want to have to hold his job against him because some in the, in the nightlife and, and club, morning club promoting world, we are kind of sucking people all the time and she don't want to be involved of that. But she asked him if he's ever cheated before. And if he has, you know, does he feel like that part of his life is over? And when this man said, well, I've never cheated because I've never actually been in a relationship to cheat on someone, meaning I was always just fucking somebody and I never committed. So when I was out here doing and, and banging whoever, okay, out here slanging the low and spreading the wide, um, you know, I, I wasn't cheating on anybody, okay? And she then self would ask me things about me. And he inquired about her last relationship. And I almost felt like he was the wrong person for her to even get vulnerable with. Because when she spoke about, you know, I was married from the time I was 19 to around 31. But after ending that situation, I made sure to go to therapy because I wanted to not be broken. Like I did not want to go into the next situation or relationship or whatever. But I just did not want to go to the next person and be broken based on what happened in my marriage like i also made sure to get my kids in therapy and when she spoke for spoke about her kids she started crying because she's a mom she's emotional about her kids and but again i felt like him i wish this he is wasn't the one for her to have that moment with because i felt like he was even too young to even console her or comfort her even though you kept, you know, take your time, it's okay. I still felt like he was too immature to even really know how to take in that moment. You know, versus how when we seen Walter and Sabrina had that moment when she was crying about, you know, having to help take care of her family. And the way he spoke to her, to me, that spoke of him being a grown man and knowing how to be there with someone. And I felt like Karen said, like, okay, well, you know, it's okay. You can cry. It's fine. And I, I just didn't like it. I just didn't like it, okay? Um, but I like how she brought up how, well, one, 
she wants to be with somebody who's just as vulnerable as her. I'm saying as how she was with him, she wants someone to be like that with her. And I'm like, that ain't him. That is not carrying that. So again, we're gonna leave that man be. So when we have like a little group date with um boom, Shiloh, Dante, Zadia, Naeem, and Tisha. I'm probably saying is it I think it's Tishia. I um, have a, a, a group date. Now, Zadia say she liked both Dante and Naeem. And, you know, she hopes the day goes well. I think her, I do too. I also think Naeem looks better in other conf- in other confessionals and other um, looks on the show than he does here. Okay, here he looked like he may be on drugs. Okay, maybe on drugs. And Dante here looks thirsty. He may be thirsty in real life though. Um, but again, it's fine, fine, fine. Now, Tashia brings up how she loves facial hair and she does not care about bald men. I'm looking like, girl, you, I think she wants their face in her place and juice. I don't need that beer. But whatever. Um, I felt like their conversation was sexual. I felt like they were talking about, you know, being sensual and being sexual or whatever their love languages and the strength faces they've had sex. I'm looking like, this is a lot for a first date with four people. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, five people. Um, it was a fun conversation. No one was offended or whatever. I do feel like Shiloh said, was it Shiloh? I think it was Shiloh who said that um, Naeem, no, it was Tisha, somebody. It, it was Tisha who said, I'm not going to be out here spreading my bits. I, I, I ain't doing that. You know, whoever I was with, you know, doing things with, that is their business. I'm like, girl, get out of my face. You, you're going to have some conversations about things that happen sexually. It's not that big of a deal. But, I mean, if she don't really like anyone here, that would probably be a good time to not have those conversations. But, yeah, a good time was had by all they had drinks or whatever. So, I do feel like this is more of a thing for, more for me, was for Shiloh and Zadia to, you know, communicate with Dante and Naeem. Tashia didn't even really need to be there. But that is my opinion on, on, on that and whatnot, okay? Now, we do see all the ladies meet up at the ladies' lounge. Okay, to discuss things with Tommy about who they like, who they don't like, who they over, who they under, and whatnot. Okay, now they also bring up how wrong button. They also bring up how um, Alicia could not make it. Alicia got into a car accident on her way there. Okay, and they said that Phil, okay, that Phil was on his way to help her. I don't have a photo of Phil, but Phil is one of the guys. So Phil was gonna go help her. Um, out with that situation. So, who they like? Now, Camille, uh, Tashia, and Carrie all say they like Cornelius, which of course did not make Camille happy, because C- Camille really wants him to herself. I'm like, that ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. Now, Sabrina says she likes Tyrone and Walter. Zaya also brings up how she had a good time with Tyrone. Now, Carrie, okay, brings up how, well, I like Tyrone too. And you know, they had been talking on the phone or whatever. But then he called me one day and said, you know what I'm saying, that he'd been thinking about it. And he just did not feel like, you know, they had a connection. So he did not want to, you know, you know, keep dealing with her. Now she said he was very cold about about how he said it. And it made her it hurt her feelings. It hurt her feelings or whatever. Now Shiloh, okay, then said, and I wish I would have picked up, but I just don't so I feel like it. But Shiloh say how for her, he talked to her after that happened. He told her, well, he was sorry about how he said it to her, but he also he only had the he only had the like the 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 energy or the, or the what were he he could only emotionally handle entertaining three women, and so that was why he cut off Carrie because Carrie was like number four or five. So. He just felt like, okay, I know the three women I have the most connection with. There's no point in me forcing myself to do a fourth woman if I have stronger feelings for the three. The issue I think everybody gonna have with that is how he conveyed that information to Carrie. Is Carrie is Carrie putting twenty on ten, or was he really cold to her? So that's a conversation that I do think they need to have, so we can see. Well, what did he say? How did he say it, and why? Did he say that because Carrie was then upset that he had that conversation with Shiloh and not with her? And I do wonder why he talked to Shiloh. 
and not carry. So I, I do want to see what happens with that later on or whatever. So Moomin then brings up Moomin brings up how she likes Corey. You know, he helped pay my tire, we went on the date or whatever, and he's actually not a bad person or whatever. Now, Zadia and Sabrina then brings up, I don't like Corey. I don't like him. He's saying he definitely, when he, when he talks, it doesn't make sense. And, you know, I see red flags. And the weird priority I always have for this show is, I feel like if someone say, hey, I like this one person, I don't understand why the other women then say, you know what, I don't like, I don't like him, because that puts that person in the bottom, and my thing is, I would never care about putting someone in the bottom that someone else likes, I want to put someone in the bottom who none of us like, if someone has said already how they like that person, let them like them, let them like them, but that's just on me, anyway, um, they all bring up how they don't like Carrington, um, Courtney says for her, Courtney knows Carrington. She's saying for her, she's on it for like five years. And, you know, she don't feel like he's ready for a... She lying. I don't care. Anyway, Sabrina brings up how they were on the phone. Carrington and Sabrina. And how when she asked him or mentioned him, like, you know, you're on 12 years older than you, that he snapped on her and said, you know what I'm saying? Look, I'm not going to go back and forth with you about our age, whatever. If you feel I'm too young for you, then we don't have to do this. I'm looking like, why he do that? Who does that? And again, Carrington to me, Carrington to me, for sure is the asshole. That's just on me. So, the two people, excuse me, y'all, that they put up is Carrington and Corey. And I'm like, okay, because y'all know we felt like Corey should have went home on day one. Mainly because Corey keeps telling us how all he do is rinse and repeat the same information, the same uh, conversation, the same shit to each woman. So for that reason alone, he do need because you not even really being organically um, genuine because you're 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 repeating the same shit person to person to person. Is there no genuine conversation going on? So that for me, he needs to go home. Well, for Carrington, there's a shortness in Carrington. When he's talking or when he's emoting any emotion, I feel like he's not being genuine either. So the difference between these two is Corey at least is trying to talk to the women, but he's just he's just trying to see what lame ass lines work on with girl. Whereas Carrington, I feel like Carrington's putting up a facade and he's coming off like I like I'm a good guy. I like you. I see very well. But it's like no, you're a fuck boy. Okay. So Corey. Met up with Tashia, okay, um, because he's in the bottom two. And when he was hugging her, I'm like, why are you hugging her too tight, too long, let it go, okay? And when he said that, you understand, when you came in that dress, and so I, I had to touch you with your permission. But, sir, she didn't give you permission. Get your hands off that lady, okay? Now, he tells him how the ladies have been having conversations about what he's been doing. Okay, and they do not feel like his conversations are genuine. Okay, they seem more general, okay, repetitive with each woman. And he on some, well, you need to get it together. Okay, you on some, you, 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 you look, you're not that bad. Okay, but you need to be careful about your little bullshit. Okay, now when Camille is me with Carrington, you know, and he's off the bottom too, and you know, he, he was happy to be on a date with Camille. Okay, he. Oh, a date with Camille. Oh, okay, a date. Okay, cool. And until she said, you know, me and the ladies, we had a conversation and we came to a consensus <laughs> about you. We felt like you have a wall put up. You're like, oh, is this a, is this a date? <laughs> is this a date? Okay, what's going on? Um, and they, she, she told him, like, we feel like you, if I can interview with you, okay, there is it's all service level shit. And, you know, that's how all the women feel. Oh, okay. So, we're talking about other people now. So, this is a date or therapy. So not therapy. <laughs> when he said, this is, I said, therapy, sir, have you ever watched the show? I really felt like he either never watched the show or he was too arrogant to feel like he could be in the bottom because he really thought it was a date. And I'm like, sir, the women met and talked. This is the time for someone to go. It's the end of the week. What are you doing? So he then said, how, well, look, the reason that the women may feel like I'm not genuine, okay, because a lot of the women can't carry a converse. I said, 
don't don't say it. He said, yes. He said, a lot of women cannot carry a conversation. Okay. So that's why they feel how they feel. However, I would love to move on to the next part of our date because we've talked about this thoroughly already. Meaning I don't want to sit here with you and discuss what the other women don't like about me. Okay. I am done. I was like, this Negro here. This Negro here. Okay. And I'm like, at this very moment, I said, oh, he definitely cussed Sabrina out. Okay. I could imagine his voice saying shit to her. I can, because when she said, when she said, you know, he checked, I said, I wonder what happened. But hearing how he talking to me, I'm, I can perfectly see him getting a whole fucking attitude at her and going off. You arrogant because he's a bastard. Okay. Anyway. So again, I'm like, he must have never watched the show. So, no, sir, you about to lose your job. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm just like, well, he said, can we can we move on to the next part of our day? We have already discussed this thoroughly. And I'm I'm like, nigga, do you she's time you to go? And as she's saying to him, you know, this is a process. And so as she's saying that he's laughing. <laughs> Okay. It's like, you know, we just feel like you're not, oh, sound like I'm not ready to love. She's like, you're not ready to love. He said, okay. All right. Um, all right. He kind of gets up and walks out and then it comes back to me. They say, how you know saying? Well, it's, un- it's unfortunate, but whatever. Um, this process isn't for me. I'm going to take a different, it's going no, it's going to take a different kind of person to be with me. I'm not yet a crazy person. He has a lot of of great, he would he was really round here acting like he Billy Bass. Okay, like no one can just even stop him from being a jack. I'm like, you are a jackass. And it's weird to me that you're gonna blame the women since they can't have a con- a conversation. And their point was you talk to us as if it's an interview, and that isn't what it is. You're not you're fake, you're fake as fuck. Okay, so again, Carrington is going home, and for some reason, Corey has escaped a second elimination, okay, and I'm like, how does this keep happening? What is going on? And then Tashia even said that, you know, see, you're not that bad, you know, tonight wasn't, I'm like, is it a fucking Twilight Zone? The only saving grace for me is that the women has not seen him talking and saying he's rinsing and repeating shit, so I do think when they watch the show back, if, if he doesn't change his approach and he does the same shit the whole season, someone going to punch him in his socket. Okay, maybe me. I don't know. So, again, we now have three of the 20 people gone. Okay, three. We know Lamont went home, Libby went home, and now, um, I forgot that my name. Um, what is his name? Uh, Cor- not Cor- not Cor- why not Karen? I'm gonna have to get Karen then. But now Karen then has went home. So again, we will see who is sent home next week. I hope who I hope it is. Who do I think will go? Because next week a woman's going home. Um which woman could go home? You know what? I do wonder if it's either Courtney or Tashia. Or Shiloh, because Tashia really thinks she's a shit, and I don't know if the guys will fully like her feeling that way because guys are assholes. Uh, I wonder for Courtney because she wants to fuck Cornelius. I wonder if that could you know be weird. And Shiloh, well, Shiloh's the one's a sex therapist. Maybe it could be Camille. Maybe Camille. We'll have to see what happens next week. Anyway, y'all, I hope y'all enjoy my long interview. Okay, do not forget to like the video and all that stuff. The follow me and all that stuff. And until then, I will talk to y'all. Take care. Gotta go. Peace.